everyone and welcome back to my channel Beth Chats Books. Now today's video is going to be my version of the literary fiction tag. So I was kindly tagged in this by Jasmine over at Jasmine's Reads who I'll tag down below who originally created this tag. So thank you so much for tagging me. I was very humbled to be tagged and obviously as somebody who is very much a fan of literary fiction I thought this tag looks amazing so well done. Jasmine on creating this tag because it's absolutely fantastic and I'm so excited to answer your questions. So without further ado I'm going to get stuck in. So question number one is how do you define literary fiction? Now I've listened to Jasmine's answer and I also listened to Mark Nash's answer because I was really struggling to define literary fiction. Now Mark said something really interesting about how literary fiction is kind of conscious of fiction that came before it, whether it's canon literature or a different kind, it kind of harks back or kind of pays homage or homage, however you say that, to kind of past literature. And Jasmine defined it as literature that kind of raises or discusses social issues and makes social commentary on things, which I think are both really valid ways to describe literary fiction. To me, my impulsive answer and my kind of gut answer to this question is that literary fiction seems to, without sounding a little bit oversimplistic, it really plays into the, the, the literary world. So... It has an end goal, literary fiction, which is obviously to entertain its readers, but it, it it is really using the power of the literary world. It is creating beautiful sounding prose. It is really honing in the skills of writing and storytelling. It's... It's something that's almost thicker and richer than a standard, plain, genre type of style of writing, which this all sounds really, really ambiguous, and I'm not purposefully doing that, but I feel like literary fiction, the minute you pick it up, you know there's a difference. It might have a lot of poetic or beautiful passages on things like nature, or it might go into a lot of character detail. It might develop a character a lot more than... For example, what I'm trying to do is compare it to other genres. So things like horror, it has your stock structure. You do a big reveal, something scary happens. It's all building up to that tension, then it's release. With the thriller, there's twists and turns, and they use that kind of structure plot. I'm trying to think, you know, with fantasy, you have to do the world building. So there's components of other genres. But literary fiction doesn't have that main goal to accomplish those structures or, or plot points. So I think it's really hard to pinpoint because everybody who writes literary fiction does it in a slightly different way. So there's some authors that I love that purely just leave you a long period of time to immerse with their characters. And their characters have very philosophical outlooks on things. Or they do a lot of kind of internal musings that we get to have a look at some literary fiction a bit like mark was saying kind of harks back to other literature or it aims to challenge you in some way to challenge your opinion of something that could be political or social um or it's trying to be controversial or it's trying to be structured in a controversial way so it doesn't like following classic form and structure and style but mainly i enjoy literary fiction because it has more flowery language than than different genres. It, it can take me completely out of my world and make me think about other things. I think sometimes beautiful passages of nature or reflective elements. A lot of characters in literary fiction will muse on their past a lot, which I quite enjoy. But I know for some people, if you're a fantasy lover, unless it's to bring the plot forward, maybe you're not necessarily interested in that. I think floaty and flowery is kind of how I describe literary fiction. I think that's why a lot of people don't necessarily believe it's it's its own genre because it is quite similar to classics in, in some ways but then it depends on the literary fiction you enjoy and obviously that's probably more the literary fiction that I do enjoy. So I've kind of butchered that question Jasmine but in a roundabout way I feel like I've tried to answer it. And then number two, name a literary fiction novel with a brilliant character study. So I really tried and there are so many books I could have picked for this because with me and literary fiction I feel like most literary fiction that I really enjoy and that I give five stars really have given me time to sit with the characters so I think 
in some ways I could argue that any of my favourite literary fiction novels would have classed as a great character study because if I feel like I really got to know them then I think it achieves that. But I'm going to annoy so many people by answering with a really cliched answer in the sense that this is my one of my favourite books of all time and <laughs> any tag video I somehow managed to bring this book up and today is no exception. So I'm going to pick The Virgin Suicides by Jeffrey Eugenides purely because it really is a character study of the girls. So you become, as a reader, like one of the boys who spends a lot of time watching, obsessing, analysing, observing these girls and it becomes almost a fascination and an obsession. And as a reader you kind of feel like you're one of the lads kind of voyeuristically looking in on these sisters. And by the end you get a really richer sense of the sisters and in a weird sense you kind of get to know them individually but they all kind of in the story conglomerate as one girl which sounds like that's not a great character study but it really is and it's the first book I've ever read that really takes the idea of looking at a character from that weird voyeuristic aspect which as a reader you're not really usually given you're usually watching a character like a character but kind of feeling like you're almost a character in the story watching it and watching the girls relationships and situation unfold I think is good and although some people might say that The Virgin Suicides isn't a literary fiction I definitely think it is because it's one of those books that I still can't place in a genre and to me literary fiction books are often books that you can't quite place in just one genre so number three, name a literary fiction novel that has experimental or unique writing. So I have picked The English Patient and I've picked this book because I recently read it and I will talk about more about it in my Goodreads summer readathon wrap up too because it was quite a recent read. But as I was reading it I was really appreciating that when I first tried to read it at 18 at my very first course that I enrolled in English in my first year of uni I really couldn't connect with it and I think it's because the writing is so experimental so I was trying to explain this to my mother the other day and I said I can tell I've come on leaps and bounds as a reader from that age from 18 to 23 because I could appreciate now and, and pinpoint and acknowledge what was making it difficult for me to read that book and I think it was the writing style so for example in one paragraph it will discuss three or four different things so it might discuss what the English patient's thinking internally then what's happening in the villa around then it might go into another character and their musings all in one paragraph which isn't broken up and it's not dialogued so we have to make the effort to reread the passage and figure out is this what the English patient's thinking is this what another character's thinking like Kip or Hannah and we kind of have to go through each paragraph and kind of sift out what was going on so the structure doesn't lay itself to a traditional style there wasn't a lot of dialogue in the book uh, there wasn't a lot of breaking up of chapters either and, and of pages so it definitely was a difficult writing style but once you get into it and you acknowledge that every other paragraph you might have to go back and say the words out loud a little bit and play around with with the paragraph and think what was that talking about and obviously the structure itself it flitted a lot between past and present but like I said, sometimes some books punctuate that with little asterisks or, or, or other indications and this book doesn't. So you have to be what I would call an active reader when you read it. You really have to acknowledge it's going to be difficult and kind of take your time with it. But it's a very rewarding book in the end for that. Um, but you have to go in with that frame of mind. So um, yeah, it's not just what I'd class as a, an easy read and the writing style can be a little bit jarring at times but yes that's my perfect example because it is very much a literary fiction because the characters muse on their past it doesn't really project too far in the future and we're kind of in a present moment when all these characters have managed to merge into the same present time frame and they're kind of working through feelings in that present and it deals with social issues for example war trauma for different characters and it really does a beautiful character study of each of the three or four main characters and how wars affected them and that's kind of more of the premise of the book than 
a plot as such. And then number four, name a literary fiction novel with an interesting structure. So I've picked The Night Watch by Sarah Waters because I also read this at university and one of the main reasons we read it was to look at his experimental structure because it goes backwards in time, which is not a very conventional style for most writers. So we kind of meet the characters at the end of the war when everything's already happened and we go back to almost the beginning of the relationship at the end of the book and it it kind of messes with your head a little bit because you already know what's going to happen because you kind of met it at the beginning of the book and then you kind of go back to it at the end it becomes cyclical in nature but we're reversing in time which feels disconcerting when you read it but it, it's a very playful structure and the characters are really interesting that it does raise a lot of social issues because Sarah Waters is renowned for writing lesbian characters and she's very very famous in the LGBT community and she writes phenomenally and that book's really interesting because a lot of people hark it as one of their favourites I haven't read enough Sarah Waters to make a decision for myself however I really love that book because it it did have that playful structure the relationships it kind of zooms in on just three or four marginal characters again their love life their relationship and, and then the impact of war as well so yeah there's not necessarily we don't need to get from point a to point b for the the book to work the in-between bit where we're actually having the character studies of these characters mingling together and their internal issues is the core of the book and I think that's what defines literary fiction for me it's not the getting from the A to the B it's the bit in the middle and what we're learning about the characters without there having to be an overall point or a structure or a or a reveal for me just spending time with the characters to me defines a literary fiction without there having to be an end goal and then name a literary fiction novel that explores social themes. So I put Autumn by Ali Smith because it was the first of the seasonal Ali Smith novels. And this one is the one I remember the most. I've read Autumn and Winter, but I remember this because it, it describes Brexit quite a lot and it describes political and social issues. And Ali Smith, pretty much any novel potentially by Ali Smith is what I would call one that explores social themes. She does have LGBT characters. She does talk about current political issues. She has very beautiful writing. She is very poetic in her writing style and her prose are also very interesting structurally. So she kind of ticks a lot of literary fiction boxes, I think, for a lot of people. Autumn and winter really define literary fiction for me because if someone asked me to actually explain the plot, it'd be incredibly difficult to do so. Because with most books, you kind of say, this character meets this character and this happens, and it's based in here. But she has a floaty quality to her writing where it was about a daughter and a mother and the daughter's relationship with an older man, but it really wasn't definable and it's really not a perfect book to throw a synopsis on the back of. And she's a bit of a challenge to read because it's not conventional, but she's fantastic, so she is very much a literary fiction queen to me. And then number six, name a literary fiction novel that explores the human condition. So I put Days Without End by Sebastian Barry because the way that Jasmine described this question, she said it's almost about what it's like to live in the human condition and, and, and a very human and raw book. And I fell in love with Days Without End purely for that reason. The beautiful, flourishing relationship between the two main characters. Their love of the little girl who I think they kind of semi-adopt. Because the, the, the plot's a little bit vague for me because I, I read it quite a while ago. But I remember falling in love with how beautifully and delicately it was written. Their romantic relationship was so interesting because I think a lot of fiction tries to make... And I think a lot of films I have an issue with sometimes LGBT representation because it's almost made to be pornographic or overly sexual. For example, a lot of lesbian relationships, whether in film or in books, is often 
about the very feminine sexuality and the teasing and the t taunting and the tantalising elements of it instead of having just an authentic love story. And what I loved about this is it was authentic. It wasn't sensationalised. It wasn't over-sexualised. We don't really get the sexuality side of their relationship. We get the developing romance and the kind of... The way they become almost like a married couple and they take on the hardships together and they intrinsically know what the other's thinking and how to support the other without words with just with just kind of a connection that they have and I just thought it was explored and presented beautifully and I loved after reading it that Sebastian Barry had kind of written it to his son who had recently come out as gay and he kind of wanted it, it's kind of beautiful when you read that book and then realize that it's almost a father's way of expressing his love and his pride for his son and really trying to do his emotions justice through these characters which I think and hope that his son received in the best way because it really is a beautiful beautiful book and then number seven name a brilliant literary hybrid genre novel so I've put The Immortalist by Chloe Benjamin because I think it's very much a literary fiction because we really get strong character studies of the four siblings we, they kind of get intersectioned off into the four siblings' lives. So the premise is roughly that they all lived in New York and I think they visit this psychic who kind of can predict the day you're going to die. And they all go in one by one and they find out the date. And then we go through an individual character till the day they die. But it kind of is a weird coming of age and it's not really YA but it does have hints of YA in there. And it's kind of contemporary. I would say it's very much literary because... One of the characters is dealing with his sexuality, one of them has crippling OCD, one of them has kind of depression. And so we, we kind of deal with the internal issues of the characters and there's not really a point. Obviously the point is that we get to the bit where they die and then it's the end of their story, but it's not because we're enjoying their journey so much. So I definitely would class that as literary, but like I said, it's a hybrid of, of loads of different things. And I think it's well worth a read if, if it sounds remotely interesting to you guys. And then number eight, what genre do you wish was mixed with literary fiction more? So I put psychological thriller purely because uh, my example is kind of like Truman Capote's In Cold Blood because that kind of, he classes it as a non-fiction fiction. But I think it is kind of a thriller-esque because we've we've kind of had this morbid fascination in, in contemporary life now to be obsessed with true crime and we devour thrillers on the beach and we like if they've got a splash of based on true events or even if they are fictionalized we can't get enough of, of gruesome thrillers you know things like my sister the serial killer has has blown up on booktube we have morbid fascinations in these things whether they're true or not but that's a good example of a book that is kind of thriller-esque but it's so much richer and deeper and I would like the idea the thrillers that I don't really enjoy are things like Gone Girl and Girl on the Train that are very tropey and thrillers that I've previously loved like Lullaby have been more a why done it than a who done it and a bit of a character development not necessarily plot based but character driven and I think literary fiction plays a lot with character driven storylines and I think there's a lot of room for the psychological thrillers I enjoy that are very literary to expand and to give the tropey thrillers a bit of a break so I'm going to go with that because that that's a, a kind of genre that I love when it is interplayed with literary fiction. So that's me done. I'm going to tag Charles Heathcote, Dane Reads and Graham Quigley to do this tag because I ran out of people because so many people have been tagged so if you you boys have already been tagged I apologise uh, but I've tagged you again. If anybody else would like to do this tag, just consider that I've tagged you and just go ahead and do it because it's such a fun tag and it really helped my brain get going and, and really list and think about the books that I had read that were literary fiction and play around with the genre more, which is always fun for me. So thank you so much, Jasmine, for tagging me and for doing this tag. And that's about it. So thank you guys so much for watching this video and I'll be back very soon with a brand new video. Bye now.